Hey everybody, so um, I, uh, I've i been playing around with this uh, AI um, <clears throat> website that, well, I've, I've talked about it before, it's called ARP Reader, and uh, what it does is it, it uses some form of uh, diffusion, and I don't know if it's, I don't know which version they use, but I have it on good authority that it uses like either 1.4 or like 1.5 of uh, stable diffusion. And stable diffusion is one of those um, AI art generator. It's, in my opinion, it's like the best one. And it's it's an open source um, program. The, or the code is out there. And then they have their own like for-profit website. I think it's called Dream. Um, I will, I will, I will put it somewhere, right? So I, I, I talked about the website before, and um, I, uh, I talked about how you can do character, character design in it, and it does, uh, it does really good um, character design, where they have just like a function where you can um, uh, do character design, like it, it, there's a, they, they have options that you can use, right? And one of them is characters, or you can do anime, or or you know buildings, landscapes, portraits, and it's really, really, really good at doing portraits. It really knows how to do a human face really, really well. And um, but I talked about how I have not personally done much character design because I feel like it is such an unbelievably cutthroat business. Um, like if you go on ArtStation or wherever. And you look at all of the the concept art that's out there. It's like more than half of it is character design, and it's just it's such an unbelievably cutthroat business. But I have done creature design in the past um, for like games, and uh, well, mo pretty much entirely for games. And um, I'll 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 put some some of my my stuff that I've done like over here, editor Steve. You know, put put some of your your art. Up. Um, but uh, so I have done creature design in the past, right? And I feel like that's one of my more strong suits as a digital artist is doing creature design, especially like uh, 3D stuff. And uh, and just just to get this out of the way, so if you are an AI artist, right? Uh, or I'm sorry, if you're a digital artist. I don't think that AI is ever going to replace digital artists. It's just going to be a powerful tool in your arsenal, especially if you do 3D. Um, because uh, if you do if you do 3D, you know you, it's gonna it's just gonna help you. It's just gonna do help you to do um, concepts. You know, just gonna help you to come up with ideas and like spitball things at your art director or you know whatever. Um, and, uh, and, and it's just, it's just going to be a powerful tool in your toolbox, right? So I will walk you through some of my process of kind of how I would do creature design. And basically, I, I think that this is just, it's just another really powerful tool in your toolbox. It's not going to replace digital artists. It's just going to be something that you can use that will really improve your art, right? So if I was going to do a creature design, like I'll show you some of the stuff that, um, that the, like kind of the, what I was going for was just some kind of like alien sort of sea life kind of creatures. Um, and then I wanted to use, you know, I wanted to use the AI to kind of make some stuff and I wasn't expecting it to be a finished illustration, you know. I was expecting it to just kind of spitball ideas. And like, even, even you know, taking bits and pieces of things and then like photoshopping them together. Um, and then that's where I think it really, really shines is if you use it in conjunction with your other art skills, like Photoshop or sketching and, uh, and things like that. So like, if I was going to do a creature, a creature design, right? I would start with something like this. I would start with uh, a 
a sketch, right? And then this is not mine. I don't know whose this is. I got this off of like Pinterest, I think. This is, um, this, these are, uh, which I'm call it, um, kind of like either inspired by, or it could be some, some concept art for XCOM. I think that these are the little gray, the, the gray aliens from XCOM. And then this is, you know, kind of like, that's the closest to either what they went with. I don't know. Again, I don't know who this is. Don't want to take credit for your work. Um, but the, I just wanted to see what art breeder would do with sketches because this is my, my process, right? I would work, I would have, um, a bunch of sketches that I would work from, from something like this, you know, where I would have like some ideas, um, just like, you, you know, if my art director said, okay, so they're gonna, um, you know, I want you to do something that it looks like little, little gray aliens, you know, big heads, spindly long, you know, bodies and, and humanoid, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Then I would, I would do a bunch of sketches that, you know, had those kind of ideas in there. So what I'm doing is I'm letting the AI do some prompts from, from, from those ideas, right? So I, I plug these in. And then I gave, I gave the, uh, um, I gave the, the, uh, the, the prompt alien creature concept art, highly detailed, AK render volumetric lighting. So just, you know, um, alien creature, it does seem to like the line art, like, you know, I was just expecting it to kind of, kind of work with the sketches and then sort of come up with something, right? So I, so I plugged this in and I was like, all right, well, what if I took that and plugged it back in? What if I gave that back to the, to Art Breeder again, you know, and sort of let it refine its own sort of sketches and give it the same prompt again? And then this is what it came up with, um, is uh, it, it, it started to kind of do some weird looking creatures, right? And, uh, and then I looked at this stuff and I was like, oh, it kind of looks like H.R. Geiger, you know, like alien jellyfish or uh, some kind of like a sea creature, right? So I'm like, okay, let's work with that. <laughs> and then I, so, so I'm just taking, I'm taking the same thing, right? And then I'm just plugging it back in to the, um, to the, uh, to the, to the, to the website again and again, right? So once it, once it came up with this, then this is when I took, um, I took, uh, well, not Photoshop. I use Krita. Krita is one of those, um, like Photoshop adjacent <laughs> programs, but it's free and it's open source. And, uh, they're actually making a, um, if they've either made it or they're making a plugin where you can do your own. Uh, you can use the, the, the source code. There's a plugin that will do, you can do your own AI art on your own computer, um, using their plugin in, in Krita. And then, or they're doing another one for, uh, Blender and so on and so forth. Right. So this is kind of like my finished illustration or it's getting there. It's pretty, pretty close to done. Um, so what, what, what I, what I wanted was I wanted some alien sea life kind of creatures, but I wanted them to look like they had some sort of human humanoid kind of traits, like split down the middle, you know, head and on top and arms and legs, etc. But with tentacles, right? It's for for a, a book, a thing that I'm working on, right? So I take this, I take this image, I download this image. Right. I'm just gonna save that in my downloads, and then I'm gonna go into uh, Krita, right? And then I'm gonna I'm gonna open that in Krita, and what I'm gonna do, and you can see it's very low resolution. So this is where your your 
Photoshop skills are, are going to come in, right? Or, or credit skills. Um, so what, what I want to do, right, is I'm going to pick one of these. Um, I ended up really liking this one. So what I did was I, I went in and then I just kind of, uh, I'm going to um, select it and then put it on a new layer. And then I'm going to kind of paint it a little bit. So Krita is a little bit different from Photoshop. There's, I'm going to use the lasso tool and I'm going to draw around. And then um, I need to, in Krita, you have to, instead of having a little button where you do the add lasso thing, you have to hold down shift and then it will do, it will just add to your, uh, your little cutout thing, right? So I'm just going to go around and I'm going to, um, uh, come on, pen tool. Still figuring out this, this tablet I got. I'm, all right, I'm using the mouse. <laughs> I, I usually use my, uh, my tablet, my PC tablet to do stuff like this to draw on. I do it in bed. So I'm just going to add, you know, I'm going to add, go around and, and kind of uh, cut out this shape of this jellyfish like creature and then just add to that uh, shape, right? In Krita. And sort of get like a, uh, I'm going to use this as like a sort of more refined sketch that I want to uh, plug in, right? So I have this all, uh, or, uh, I'll just, I'll just go around and do it. I'll, I'll, uh, you can, or I will fast forward through it in the editing. I'll just cut this whole thing out and then show you what's next. Okay. So I've got my, my little, uh, jellyfish kind of, um, whatever, you know, octopus kind of tentacle shape cut out. Right. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to cut it out. And then I'm going to put it, uh, put it on a new layer. And then, uh, yeah, here's, here's one of the ways that crit is a little bit different is that some of the stuff like the transform tool is just right here in the, um, uh, I actually like some things a lot, a way better in Krita. Uh, so I've got my, my kind of like octopus thing shape cut out, right? So now I'm just going to kind of go in and I'm just going to, I'm just going to color, color. And I, you know, I, I like the, uh, the airbrush tool. So I, I use the airbrush tool a lot. So, um, let's say that I want to, you know, keeping with the, uh, the kind of HR Geiger, uh, HR Geiger, whichever, whatever it is, uh, kind of aesthetic, um, I'm going to, uh, um, I'm going to kind of go with a, like a gray paint job. Um, so, okay. Yeah. I'm going to use the airbrush tool. So I've got this, this layer that I'm, I'm going to do, um, here's my, here's my line art, right? This is my background. And then I'm going to do a mask, like a, uh, a layer on top of that and uh, I'm just gonna paint it gray and then I'm gonna make it a multiply layer right so that makes it transparent um, and then uh, I can come in and, and kind of do some some highlights and stuff uh, you know just I'm just doing a really rough uh, job of, of, of a you know a, like a digital painting kind of thing to get some, some line art that is something for the AI to work with, right? So we're just kind of refining this sketch a little bit. Uh, and then, you know, this is the same way that I would work if I was working um, with uh, my, own, my own stuff, you know, is uh, I would be... Um, sort of refining the sketch. And then like, I would also be sending stuff, you know, to my art director and then being like, okay, what do you think of this? And what do you think of this? 
And, um, you know, one tip I will give you guys about, about working with um, art directors doing creature design, um, because it is way, way easier to break into creature design than it is to do character design for if you want to work for like a game company or something like that, is know who you're working for, right? Like if you're, if you're working for 20th Century Fox and then you want to do alien stuff, show them your alien stuff. You know, if you want to work for Wizards of the Coast and you want to do Dungeons and Dragons, show them that you know what a Gretsch is. Show them that you know what a hooked horror is, you know, and and put that at the front of your portfolio when you're when you're sending them stuff. Right. So. Um, so, OK, so I've got I've got a little bit, of, you know, a slightly more refined sketch. Right. So I'm just going to save this. Uh, export it as a, a JPEG, right? Um, but, yeah. uh, I'm going to export this as a JPEG. I'll call it refined sketch. And then this is just this. This, this is some of my process of how I've just gotten the best results out of using the AI that's in ArtBreeder. Uh, so what I can do is I can come in here, right? And then I can do a, I'm gonna use the collager. And then um, I'm going to input, uh, I'm gonna put that, put that little sketch in. Um, that I just did, All right? And then I'm gonna uh, change the prompt. I'm gonna say, uh, let's see, alien, uh, alien jellyfish. Highly detailed, uh, we can leave the xenomorph in there. We can leave the uh, HR Geiger. Three D render, four <laughs> K render, photograph. You can leave all that in there, right? And then when you when you turn up this this dial over here, the um, I forget what they call it, like the gain or something like that. The if you if you turn up the AI up and down, then it's going to basically just give it a lot more freedom to do something with what you're telling it to do, how to use those prompts, right? Uh, so then I'm just going to tell it to to render that, and then use my prompts to just come up with something. And I, and I put the, you know, the render number pretty high up there. So, you know, just using that little sketch, it's come up with something. Um, and then, uh, you know, it's, it's not bad, but like the more, the more that you kind of refine it and give it more information to work with, the better, like the, the final, um, render is going to be, you know? So, but uh, I'll show you some of the stuff. Like I, I basically did the same thing with this, but I put a little bit more time into it. And then I, um, you know, I, I'll, well, I'll show you. So basically all of these uh, are, are these three, right? Uh, these are some of my favorites, but they're, I did a bunch uh, before kind of coming up with my final design. I think I did, I kept this one. I really like this one, right? But I'll show you what what kind of raw material it's working with to use these these prompts right so if i tell it that i want to remix it um i have you know a bunch of this kind of stuff and like i i, I was going for kind of an hr geiger kind of look you know like if you know what his art looks like besides what what was in aliens you know then you know what i mean right um so I've got this, you know, this this thing, this kind of weird jellyfish creature. And then I just basically spent a little bit more time on this one and then kind of gave gave the AI 
a little bit more of a of a, a sketch to work with, right? These are not mine. These are these are somebody else's, but I just wanted to see you know what it would what it would do with those. These are um these are things that it came up with using this this kind of line art, you know, again. So I was like taking those and plugging those back in. In fact, I think that that's what this is. Uh, which one? This one. This is uh, this is this plugged back in, you know, and giving it a few more prompts. So basically, I was just you know taking something, kind of using the letting the AI sort of refine its own sketch and come up with something, and then you know refining that that sketch a little bit more and plugging it back in and, and getting different kinds of results. So this one, you know, is uh, is is this this thing, and then uh, but are, are a few few different versions of it. Um, this one does kind of look very H.R. Geiger esque, uh, but you know, like I like the 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 pink color and everything. So uh, so, you know, if I if I tell it. Um, Here's my prompt. Jellyfish creature with lots of tentacles, concept art, and H.R. Geiger style, highly detailed, 8K render, volumetric lighting. Um, concept art. Put creature design in there. And then you you'll learn like which which prompts work better for you, like first off the way that the AI works through this stuff is it it looks at this the first set of words that you have here, so if you tell it um, jellyfish creature, that's going to be the first thing that it works on, and then when you add things on you know after that, then it's going to say okay jellyfish creature number one, tentacles got it cool number two concept art okay you know creature design and then when you when you go on you can add things like I want it to sort of look like this kind of style like I want it to look like H.R. Geiger or um, let's see who's another guy who does cool creature design let's say Ian uh, McCaig he, he did a lot of the uh, well like almost all of the concept art for uh, for the prequels, the Star Wars prequels, some of his art is really, really cool. Highly detailed, um, 8K render. It's just, we're just kind of adding, telling it what kind of style, like what we want the finished prompt or finished product to look like, right? And then I can turn the AI, sort of let it be more fast and loose or, or give it more leeway. And then the more I turn it down, the more it's going to look like this. Um, but if I turn it up, it's just, it's going to kind of, uh, come up with something that's very um, original. So, yeah, we'll just see, like, give it a second to kind of do its thing and see what it comes up with. So, yeah, I mean, that is that is a cool-looking, weird uh, jellyfish creature, right? <laughs> um, but, it, you know, it can be a little bit hit or miss. Like, you do have to kind of go through and filter out things that you like and things that you don't like. But, you know, say that I really like these tentacles, you know, um, that's where your, your Photoshop skills are going to come in, is that you can plug these, you can take these tentacles and then put them in, you know, and keep, keep sort of refining your sketch. Like, say that I like, um, I like this, this portion of this, this piece, you know, but if then I want it to have these tentacles then that's when your when your your Photoshop skills are are gonna come in, you know. Um, so let's see. I'm gonna turn down the where do I have it? Like about halfway. Um, and then there's there's some other stuff like it has this little dice thing that's down here, and I'm not really sure what that entirely sure what that does. I think it has to do with the number of steps that it takes when it's doing the, um, doing the AI. But this, uh, this website is so cool. It's, um, it's a free website. Um, you can, I like that one. I'm gonna save that one. Uh, so it is a, you know, it is a free website. 
I have not paid for, there's a, you know, it's a sort of a freemium version. Um, I have not paid for, um, for the, um, the freemium thing, but I want to give them some money because I want to make sure that they keep the lights on and pay the bills because I really like this website. It's just on my list of things to do. Um, so yeah, eight ninety nine a month gets you, um, like higher resolution. I think you can download higher resolution images. You can, uh, uh, upload more images and then you can like, if you do want to download something, um, this is a uh, pretty low resolution. So it's not really finished illustration quality on its own. Um, so you're going to need to either take this, you know, and put, put it into Photoshop or Krita or whatever and clean it up a lot, kind of refine your sketch a lot, or you're going to want to download a, a higher resolution image to work from or, you know, both. Uh, so, yeah, eight ninety nine dollars a month gets you all this and then $18.99, $38.99. Infinity high res downloads, infinity, yeah. So, um, but yeah, like the, like this, this to me, you know, just using, using the, uh, using the AI and using it like a tool, right? Like it's not producing finished illustrations for you. It's producing, um, sketches, you know, and then you need to go in and you need to refine those. And, and, you know, use it to like this, this one, um, I liked what it came up with, but then there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of stuff in here where all this stuff needs to be sort of refined, like the details. Let's see, I think I was working on the head. So you can kind of see how my, uh, my head on this one looks a little bit more finished, kind of working like top down. And then, like, some of this stuff is looking a little more rough down here. But this is using a lot of the, um, using a lot of the AI's information and then kind of, like, refining it, you know, and, and using those, those tools to come up with a, a better, like, more refined, finished illustration. But, I mean, like, man, it sure does make it fast. It sure does make the, uh, like, sketching process and... I think like working hand in hand with it, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of amazing. Like I'm, I'm always kind of blown away by the AI's creativity, like what it comes up with. So like I can have an idea in my head and then I can say, okay, I want, you know, I want something that sort of looks like this. And then I can plug in a sketch and the AI will be like, okay, you know, and just come up with something crazy that I never would have thought of. Um, but yeah, like working hand in hand, I feel like you can come up with some really, really cool looking stuff and it's going to be a powerful tool in your arsenal, you know, if you're open minded to it and, and, you know, spend the time to kind of play with it and experiment with it, but it's not going to replace your Photoshop skills. You know, it's going to, it's just going to be something that's going to add to your, to your arsenal. But, uh, but anyways, I hope that that uh, kind of helped you out and I hope that you guys play around with this and um, uh, try out this website because I just think it's so cool. And, uh, and I've been really impressed with the kind of quality of uh, stuff that it's been producing and, the, and it's like up to my game as an illustrator. I've actually started to sort of um, go back into my portfolio and rework a lot of my illustration stuff um, because I I sort of started to go more in a fine art direction and I still do that but I still you know I still do like commercial art too so uh, and digital digital art is just so much faster than uh, for you know illustration purposes and stuff like that it's just so much faster than doing an oil painting you know. Um, but, uh, but anyways, yeah, um, I think that's going to be it, you guys. And, uh, yeah, check out, check out Art Breeder. I'll put a link 
down here and uh, and try it out. All right, take care of yourselves, and I will see you in the next one.